The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 40. You get the Nasdaq up 32. S&P's up 2. Gold contract uh, up a buck, trading 12.86. We get silver down 10 cents, $14.80 an ounce. Light sweet crude. We're going to have the uh, EIA numbers out this morning. We're at 63.83 flat. Notes and bonds continue on higher price, folks. Had big volume in these uh, yesterday as they're pushing into the swing area, and it's following through out here today. You got the 10-year up 7 ticks, 123.28. 30 year up 22, 148.05, and King Dollar. King Dollar down 191 ticks, 97.01. Uh, we did come down yesterday. First day we got volume in the months uh, on King Dollar on the way down. Euro is trading at 112 to 1 US dollar. The yen is out here at 111.17. The pound is at 130 to 1 US dollar. Uh, Apple uh, saved the NDX. They got it done, as they usually do. Got it done. Uh, we were looking at that expected move uh, all day long. Talk about pegging On it, the right? TD Ameritrade uh, network. I think it started at about $8.80 in the morning. It was up to maybe $9.50. Nine yeah, something. exactly. And Apple's been, it was 10 bucks. Apple's been oscillating, yeah, from like 9 to 10 bucks, pretty much right on the peg. You gotta love it. Yep. Lots of numbers coming out today, folks. Just had the ISM. That came in weak. That's yep. where the market took a bit, a bit of a hit. We get the Fed this afternoon at we 2 o'clock. Sure and right now, folks, we got our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim. Every trading day, 45 minutes from now, folks, great program. You want to understand option, option strategies. Great time to do it. Particularly a great time to do it because when we, we were having fun with that apple yesterday. Oh, it was great. Right? We kept pulling it up, right? We, that we was the expected move, did. and it kept we moving. Did. It kept moving. Kevin Hinks, what's going on? Good morning, guys. How we doing? I, you know, apple is such a, you know, Obviously, each day in the earnings season takes on a personality and a headline name, and clearly today is Apple. So we're going to watch Apple all day. The numbers were pretty impressive when they came out. You know, the, of all things, guys, everyone has that something that they were looking at, right? Right. What really hit me was margins. Yeah. 37, 38 percent on the margins. That means that you know, the, you know, this company is still growing and still and still doing things at a high margin level. So, you know, I I look at Apple a different way than some other people. So many people just want to look at iPhones, and there's so many parts of Apple's company that that are still growing. The wearables and you know the services. Those are growing. So I think as long as iPhone stays stable and and you know tapers off uh, in, in a small percentages, this company's still growing, guys. Yeah, because they're blending. The, the services have a much bigger margin than the iPhone. So if they can right. blend that quick enough, which seems like they did yesterday, yeah. right? That, that's, that's a big deal. Let's say the iPhone's 30, 32%, well, the service is like 60% profit. So okay. the, the blend on that, you know, the service are a lot Your smaller. Your margins, you're talking about margins. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that, that really uh, ups the whole deal. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, not to mention they raised the dividend and are buying back a boatload of stock. Yeah, well, that's... $75 billion. He said, yeah, I mean, if the company was worth $750 billion, that'd be 10% of the company. And I know it's worth more than that, but that's just a quick math where it's like, man, they're almost buying 10% of the company right. back. It just, there you go. So then. it just hit a trillion right now. But Congratulations, still, Apple. That's, there you go. That's We're well, back it's above. That's 0.75, right? That's that's what that'll come down to. Right? Yes, yeah, seven point five percent. Uh, you know, yeah, the you know, th th this is a company that just can and and the number one thing, you know, say what you like about the company, say what you don't like about the company. They are a cash flow machine, so Slightly. all they do is spit out money. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you can see that, and you know, um, we just said that ISM. That's that's a little soft. The, the Fed, that's going to throw some uh, volatility in here this afternoon. I, I, sure. think, I think we all know that, like, I, we're, I, well, we're expecting something dovish. Uh, the real question is going to be how dovish, right? You know, the way these bonds are still trading, it's like, man, <laughs> it's... Right. Because think about it. You know the, the, these reporters, he's going to take questions, and they're going to ask him, number one, about 
the things that Trump is saying about lowering interest rates. And number two, they're going to ask him about a 3.2 GDP print right. and, and a pretty strong retail sales number that came out a week ago. And he's going to have to say, well, w which is it? Right. If the market's strong, why aren't rates going up, and why aren't you rate raising rates more? If if you're not raising rates, what is going on with a 3.2 print in GDP and strong retail sales, and why is the Trump administration wanting them to lower rates? So you know, everyone's talking their book. You know how that is, Tom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> everyone's talking what will help them the most. That's so, really a tough question you know, to answer. I agree. That's, you know, right? I mean, <laughs> and that's the only reason to really watch this press conference is because they're going to try and corner him and yeah. make him make a statement when he's getting better and better at not making statements. When he started off, he wasn't as good at it. He kept making headlines, which you know, I think a Fed chairman does not want to always do, but sometimes he can't help it. But now he's getting much better at that. Yeah, no doubt. You know, Kevin, yesterday, uh, Tommy and I, we were having some fun with this expected move because when we were on with you in the morning, it was, yep. was 880. Right. And then as soon as we get off, it's not crawling it was up very quickly. definitely above nine. Right? Yeah, the premium yeah. was going up um, on, those, on those options for sure. Right. Yeah. All that is, guys, that is the front expiration now with, you know, three days to go. Yes. The implied volatility in that front month, in that front expiration. I keep saying front month. I date myself in terms of options trading. The front expiration, where that implied volatility trading and that at the money straddle, that's what's making up that one day market maker move. It's called yes. this is the one day move right. in Apple. And so that's why it moves. It moves with the implied volatility. Yeah, yeah it was cool to see it going up actually. Yeah, I know. And then we were saying we'd love to know, you know, how do these normally move ahead of earnings, right? And then right. if the premium does go up, what happens as I'll the tell numbers? You what it is, Tommy, it's like it's like a, a fingerprint. Every single stock is different, and every earnings season is different. Yeah. And and it's worth monitoring though. What you guys did yesterday was telling in terms of how Apple's moving today, right? It didn't disappoint. It's now a dollar or two over that expected yeah. move, and that's why maybe that move went up during the day. You know, remember the earnings season started out with J.P. Morgan only looking for a two-dollar move. Yeah. And we said on Fast Market, this looks small right. for where we are and what we're doing. And sure enough, you get over a $4 move. Yeah. So sometimes you, the, the, for traders, you look at that number and say, that's too small, that's too big, or that's right on the nose. That feels pretty accurate to me. Because all that number is is a reflection of the order, the supply and demand of options and the order flow and the implied volatility. So that's where you're getting that information. And it's not the answer to the test, but it's part of the question. Yes. No, it was cool because we pulled up the, the the puts and the calls, right. you know, yep. at that, and you could see that it was basically you add them together, clear. and there you go. Right. You're, you're it's totally pretty clear. awesome, yeah. isn't it? And it, it's uh, we love it. And folks, it's really easy to test drive the Thinkorswim platform. Just come over to our website at TFNN. You're gonna see the banner. Hit the banner. Bring it up. You know, if you don't have it, folks, you want to test drive this deal because uh, it's a professional platform. Um, oh, yeah. Can you get what? the demo? I mean, we're looking at oh. the demo right there. Yeah. You know, as in there, there's your, you know, the analyze tab. You get in yeah. there and you got the whole the whole kit and caboodle, man, for you sure. I love it. Yeah. Kevin, you have a great one, safe one. Uh, you get you lots of action today, man. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, okay, Kevin. Man, have a great one. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow up 42, NASDAQ up 37, SP's up 3.5. We're going to have oil numbers for you at 1030, folks. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow uh, up 40, Nasdaq up 31, S&P's up 3. And, you know, for Apple being up $11, we can take a look at that NDX in a bit, but that's not helping uh, that NDX that much, you know. Uh, we just, uh, let's see, uh, NQ, I don't think it's taken out the highs of yesterday yet. Uh, of Monday, rather. What's tough is you have Google offset in a lot of that, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, I mean, Google's down 10%, Apple's up 5%, right, but right. the two, yeah, you if you... Hasn't taken it out. And that's, you can see that even the, you know, just to back it up yeah. for one second, in yeah. terms of it's literally, there's your Google. Yeah. And um, is there's that, your Apple. well, yeah. I guess they came out after though, right? They, they did, but that that's at 4.30. That, I mean, uh, ah, quarter right. five. Yep, that's, that's I just want to get the time, yeah. right, cool. right, right. So yeah, once you get up here, it is like five o'clock, cool. Yeah. yeah, and then if we go inside that NDX, Apple, of course, up five. Yep, look yeah. at that. Now down, now up 1180, man, and yeah. that move was 880 to start off right. yesterday. Um, Take two interactors up 3%. AMD, that's a good move too. That's up 2.6. Amgen's up two. I uh, know Netflix up two. You get Amgen down three. ADP's off three. What is this one? Willis Towers. Must be earnings season, yeah. right? And Fast and All is off 1.8. Okay, oil, right? Okay. We got it. So let's pull over here. So we're getting oil numbers at 1030. I'm going to jump in here. Let's pull up the contract. Oil pretty much flat for the day. Um, we're going into the call spreads. We want to check out some exposure maybe to the bullish and bearish side. So we're looking at the June contract trading at 63.70, 63.71. We're going to look for exposure maybe to the upside and the downside. It's kind of cool. It's basically what Kevin was just talking about in terms right. of, right, you get a real, um, what's the cost to buy yeah. bullish exposure, what's the cost to buy bearish exposure. The other right. way to say this is that what we do is we basically figure out what the expected move is because that's the price to buy these, exactly. right, for the oil right. contract every day, um, every Wednesday. So 63.72, we'd have exposure from 63.50 would be our best option. So you'd have about 22 cents um, to the upside. Now that's not going to give us the expected move because as Kevin said, you right. want the price of at the money, right? right? That's why we like these at the money. You buy them literally right at the money, no intrinsic value, you're just paying premium. Jump into the noons, that's what I was hoping, 63.75. 
Perfect. Wow. There we go. So, and, and the oil contract's even ticking right up to it as we speak. So the bullish contract, oops, sorry, wait, uh, 63, nope, this is the bullish one. So that's costing us $18, getting in at 63.93. The floor is 63.75 where the contract's trading at. And then we get the same exact $1.50 to the downside, and it's going to be almost identical. $1 difference, oh, and as we say it, we're looking at 37. 37 bucks. So you're looking at 37 pennies yeah. away from exactly where we're trading at right now. That's your expected move That's pretty good. by noon. Boom. Yeah. There you go, right? It's great because it really does line up to the penny. Now let's just see how the dailies line up because this would give us the expected move by 2.30. Right. This is the expected move by noon. This is the expected move by 2.30. Um, and they're going to line up at 63.50, so not quite ideal. The dailies here. Yeah, 63.50. So the so noon, the and we like the noon sometimes because yeah, they no, give no, you a, sure. a full hour and a half after the number drops at yeah. 10.30. Um, and you're trading right at it. And again, keep it in mind, this gives you the expected move where you get exposure in both directions. But just like Apple yesterday, if you just wanted to go on the bullish side, that was only going to cost you half of that, you know, 9.80, right. you know, right. so 450. Just like in this trade, you want either side 18 to $19 as this ticks around um, 63.75. And so let's just take a look. CLM. Okay, so intraday. Let's see, what we did so. You got, you got a little pop here. Let's go into the downdraft from. That's, that's last Friday, huh? Yeah, it's four days. That's last Friday. Okay. It sure is. Yeah, I'll take yep. it. I'll take it to the downside. Let's okay. See how this shakes out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yesterday quite a volatile day for it, sure. It did. It did. He gave it up on price. Yeah. You know, um, still at highs though. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're oh close, for sure. You know, Everything in context, doesn't yeah. putting it in context of where we've been. Exactly. Um, yeah. And then even just to pull it up on a more shorter time frame because the contract did um, that ISM number hit hit everything, man. Yes. Even at ten o'clock. Um, where are we? Yeah. So look at that. It did spike from, you know, 63.85 to 63.62. Talking about over 23 cents just on that ISM. I mean, maybe that helps add to the downside. And um, you know, when we line these up, we're at 63.75. We're now six pennies even below that level. But nonetheless, we get the numbers in about six and a half minutes. Well, let's see what they're looking for. So live is probably up by now, right? Ah, uh, yes, it maybe. probably is. No, you're right. Perfect. Let's try and dig in. So we'll go top live. Um, there you go. Crude oil. Let's see where we're at. Okay, perfect. This is the what to watch. Let's just read and see where we're going. So, gas stockpiles have fallen 10 straight weeks, the longest stretch of decline since 2012. Even if the total figures pay close attention to the regions. Um, European cargoes have diverted from New York to LA after California refinery problems sent prices more than 50 cents a gallon above futures. Wow, we talk about these wow. refineries, yeah. I know. So some arrived in the past week with more on the way. Pad 1C, which encompasses New York Harbor, delivery point for the NYMEX contract, is the lowest seasonally since 2014. So you see, I mean, it looks like they just take those tankers. You got a tanker out there say, oh, we're going to divert you, man. You're going to go to LA and get yeah. more money. Well, we got to right. go to a different port because they're right. not refining it at that port. Right. Um, Number two, crude production. February output was 11.68 million barrels a day in the latest monthly report released Tuesday. That's quite a bit lower than the 12 million in the EIA weekly figures for the month. Cushing stockpiles now that WTI Midland has backed off to about $5. Um, BBL, what is that? Per barrel under Cushing. Uh, there's more incentive to send barrels up to the hub rather than force them through the coast via train or truck. Again, talking about moving these around the country, right? Yep. Inventories have stabilized in the mid-40 million range. Um, U.S. crude exports seem to be on the mend after getting hit by the ITC chemical tank fire. Again, we talked about it's amazing how these things play out for continual, right? Um, that one fire in March and some bad weather that swept through Texas in early April. We aren't out of the woods yet, though. Parts of the south were dealing with tornadoes, heavy rains, windstorms much of the last week. While reports on outages were scant, some of the impact could show up in slower outflows. Um, yeah, so if you can't get those exports out of the country because of call them natural problems, disaster yeah. in terms of weather. Um, and let's just see if they do have any of those headline numbers. Let's see. 
So the a API came in. Um, so that I was looking. I don't more. think it had the number yeah, there. Six point. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. So the crude rose 6.81 million barrels. That was last night at 4 o'clock. And this gives us a number, I believe. So crude, yeah. we're looking for... Whisper numbers, uh, so 4 million. 4 million barrels. Survey number is 1.75. You want to you guess? Where are we going? I think it's closed. Isn't it say closed? Oh, it does say entry closed. Yeah. We missed it. Where they cut it off? Five minutes? Maybe ten minutes. Yeah. I think it's ten minutes before the number. Okay, okay we'll get in there. Um, so looking for a build, right? Looking yeah. for a build. API was six plus. Whisper numbers four plus million. Survey numbers one point seven five. Um, we'll find out. It's coming to us. You're gonna love it. Yep. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Our phone number is eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. We have the Dow Industrials up forty. Nasdaq up twenty eight. Uh, S and P's up two. That Nasdaq's giving it up. That's interesting. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <laughs> Excuse me. 
Are you Welcome amazed back. by this number? Is that what's happening? Totally. <laughs> Welcome He's back, folks. Speechless, man. You shit. Nine. <laughs> so we get a rise of 9.93 million barrels. Median estimate was 1.7, like we talked about. You had the Bloomberg survey coming in at maybe about 4 million. Nonetheless, Big way number. over than we thought, jumping back. Yeah. And you've seen quite a spike. So go. we were trading at 63.75, even ahead of that number we traded lower, which is just interesting. Yeah. But you could have, as we pulled that up, right? Exposure from 63.75. Contract was going to cost us about 37 cents. $37, but $0.37 cents in the price of oil, Yes. and uh, you had exposure until noon, and so right away you got a spike down to $63.21. Um, you can always have these orders in, you know, in terms yeah. of if you want to bid in there, because that happens sometimes. But we'll follow back up. Nonetheless, pretty big build. Maybe cheaper gas prices coming at us. Both time. Yeah. Let's go to uh, Ken in Kansas City. Hey, Ken, what's going on? Oh, oh we lost okay. Ken. Let's okay. see what he wanted, though. The stock was up there. I'll get it for you, sure. Um, sorry about that, Ken. That's all right. See. We got it. We got O I O L U. O I L U. Okay. Oh, one more. Hold on. There we go. Okay. So let's take a look. Okay. So this is the uh, Pro Shares uh, Ultra Pro three times exchange traded fund. Oh, the I, fund hope, I hope we was going short on this. Seek coming daily into that investment number. that corresponds to three times the daily performance. Of the correspondent benchmark. Okay, so WTI crude oil sub index. Yeah. Um, that's going to be dropping as oil drops. Right. No, no, totally. Yeah. yeah. And this, these ones always confuse me. So not not the, the not the three times ones, but see what what happens is this. Okay, Pro shares Ultra Pro, three times crude oil ETF. The fund will see daily investment results that correspond to triple the daily performance of its correspondent benchmark. Which is the Bloomberg WTI crude oil sub-index. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if, that's go if it's going down, this... It's just a triple exposure. I, it, no matter which way it went, da up or down, huh? Well, wait, that's... A, yeah. Yeah. But that's what's but different the, about this one versus what happens is that... The, you're thinking of bearish ones, right? Bearish ones and bullish ones, right. Okay, but they're in inverse. A yes. bearish is an inverse. Right, right. It's still going to just go up and down inversely yeah, no, to what it's tied to. You. So this is just this oil is just, times three. Yeah, period. No matter which way that's, it goes. That's, you know, so, to avoid the confusion. Yeah, oil yeah, times three. That's I, it. And well, you know what's intriguing about that's that? That's why I was that, like, oh, that, that's I why, hope you didn't go long on no, this. No, that, that's why this definitely is just, uh, they, you know that this is a daily one because it's like you're just, you're just going like, okay, if you're going up, it's going to be three times up. If you're going down, it's going to be three times down. Yes. Yeah, right. The inverses are the same, though, when you say the daily one, because they're, they're just inverse. Going up, you're going down. Going down, you're I, going up. I understand that, but this one here is going to go both ways on one deal. They don't need two for the same deal. I'm sorry, I lose you there. I don't know. You could have a bearish one that just acted inversely. I'm not sure what you mean. Just like the, the I, indices do. I, I, I understand. I understand. It's the, the, I think people could be lost when they're following. I, I'm just trying to bring I, them along I'm to what lost. you're talking about. <laughs> but that's, there's nothing to be lost over. That's, there, there really isn't. Um, okay. okay. They only need one of these to go bullish or bearish, where all the rest of them, they have a bull one and they have a bear one. But, this, but this, okay, but can't you go, can't you go, if you, so you're saying that well, you... Well, you can still go long and shot this, yeah. But you could do the same thing with an equity ETF. Oh, I understand that. But you're implying that they need a bearish ETF to go bearish on the equities. No, I'm not implying. Okay. They have a bullish right. and a bearish. Right. And this one here, they only have one. Right. But they could have a bearish. That's all. Yes, they, okay. they, yeah. they could. They could have a bullish one, too, but they don't. They do have a bullish one. This is the bullish one. No, this is bullish or bearish. This That's... is bullish. Everyone is bullish if it's the, the nature. Do you see it? If you want a bullish NASDAQ, it's just owning the NASDAQ times three. It's not a bull. You know, this goes 300 times down or up but that's a bullish etf one we have to get this straight because now people are listening so that's i'm not gonna you can't just like let it go a okay. bullish etf to the bullish side yeah a triple we should pull these up right is still gonna lose you three times to the downside I okay so that's not a bullish one that's okay. just a what i'm trying to explain is this okay if we pull up if we pull up dig okay yep this here okay yep. corresponds to Oil going higher. If it's I, a 200 percent. Yep. If I pull up DUG, this yep. corresponds to oil going low. Correct. The one we just had only has one for both of them. But DIG is one for both of them in the same way that you're saying. 
I understand okay. that. Yeah. I understand that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you really, you're not doing a good job explaining it than the difference, as in they just don't have a bearish one. Everyone, there's not enough. I, I yeah. understand that. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, that's, that's why I get lost when I do it, because when they started, they'd have a bullish and a bearish. They have these here that just have one. So that's right. But we shouldn't call it a bullish one. I think that's what's confusing. Because all you're doing is just a triple exposure one. Okay? That's it. It's not I understand. A... I, that, I understand. That's what I'm trying to get to. Okay? But the, that. The... I'm not, there's a lot of people that are. Okay. Whew. Careful, folks. <laughs> careful. Let's, careful. Let's see. Let's we're, tread lightly. Let's see where oil is. Oh, my right goodness. Now. They're not bullish ones. We have to go over this. They're not. Because I can't. There's, there's hundreds of people watching, right? At least. No? Okay. What, We're going to leave them confused. What, what I, is, I feel like there's a lot of people left confused out okay, there. Okay, so what this, is not a bullish one? When you, when you pull up... Like the one we just pulled up, what? oil you. That is not a bullish... I understand that. That's okay, not, you keep calling them bullish and bearish, though. There's not. There's, 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 there's overexposure. Don't get frustrated. There's people out there that got to understand this, man. They're not bullish ones. They're just Why can't triple. you get to the point that everything else has two of them, a bullish and a bearish not one? Not everything. Okay. No, that's how, they, that's, how they, that's how they're set up. The, the, this other one just has one to go both ways. That's the, okay. That's the one we just that's pulled That's the up. only one in the world you're saying. That's, that's your... There's not many of them. Well, that's not all of them. That's a, that's a... <laughs> we gotta talk to, we gotta, we can't, don't get frustrated with me, because there's a lot of people out there just like me, and that's why you can't just let them go, and you think this is a clarity conversation for them? Um, that's... We'll move on. Let's take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here. The, um, you get Advanced Micro up 32 cents. Apple, uh, that's up 12 bucks. CVS, now this, is, this stock was getting hit. Yeah, earnings. Yeah. So that's up 340. Yeah, it's the first time I got a pop in a long time. You talk about, about down. So that's down from 113. Ooh, that's, that's a hit, man. Let's see what they have to say. So, earnings estimate was 151. They come in at 162. Fiscal year, they're looking at, uh, they were looking at 668. Now they look at 675 to 690. I think they beat on revenue. Maybe tick down one more. Yeah, they yeah. go 61.6 versus 60.24. Not bad for a quarterly revenue, 61 billion. And I believe this is the first quarter after they had, uh, who'd they buy? The big yeah. health uh, provider. This is the first full quarter, I believe, that they're fully integrated with uh, that Yeah, they big, bought someone. Uh, right. Geez, I can't believe it's escaping me, right? I mean... It wasn't Boots, really. No. no, that's Walgreens. That's their biggest competitor. Um, Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now. Up 47, Nasdaq up 29, S&P's up two, gold, gold down a buck at 12.84. We're going to be getting action uh, coming right up to two o'clock, folks. Come right back. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now is up 39. Nasdaq's up 28. S&Ps are up one and a half. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Cakestack, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Cakestack, what's going on, brother? Morning, guys. How you doing? Good morning, Teddy. We're doing good, man. Hey, we got Fed Day today. We're going to have some uh, movement in these currencies. We do have Fed Day today, you know, and it's pretty interesting last week how we were talking about the dollar pushing the move towards into the end of the week, and we got the rebound. We were looking for that possible profit taking profit taking move. So um, now the really interesting thing is to see what's leading and what's not with the dollar today. You have the euro and the pound, the two big weights on the, in the dollar index that are positive, but the U.S. dollar Swiss is the one that's making the big move. That one fell out of bed today. So. Yeah. Yeah, the other ones have been rallying since Friday, but the Swissy was kind of holding kind of neutral underneath these highs, and then today it released. So, and the interesting thing is, remember we were talking about the strength in the dollar, where was it really the dollar, or was it the weakness and more of the other yes. lesser measures? You know, and if you look at um, the New Zealand dollar as well as the Australian dollar, they're not acting like the other currencies are against the dollar today. Okay. So, um, it's kind of a... I would say a, a balancing out, you know, it's, it's, it was end of the month yesterday. Unlike the stock market where they try and settle um, positions and things like that, currency traders are, are different, you know. So we're heading into this Fed time, you know, and I think one of the key things they're looking at are the numbers that came out recently. Um, the GDP number yeah. um, and the earnings numbers. So if we didn't have this dovish Fed or this global dovish, I, um, basically, across the board, central bank uh, leaning, I would say that they would probably be leaning towards raising rates right now, you know, to kind of slow things down a little bit. Um, so it'll be really interesting to hear if there's any talk of that today, because right. that's been pretty much off the table. Now, right? Teddy, how do you look at, like, I, I have the euro up here, right? Right. <laughs> now, how do you look at, like, when I look at this, and, you know, and I'm not, to me, it looks like it comes back inside its range again. But how does a currency trader look at that? Is that saying that the euro has a shot to go higher now? Or how, how would you look at that? That's a really good point. Now, if you look at how it's traded, like right now, it looks like it's a corrective upside move because it's been basically in a bear trend since the uh, the end of the end of, end of March, yeah. of March, right? Yes. So, 
So if you just look at it from that short-term view, it looks like a corrective rally, and especially because it's coming back into that mid-range where it's basically been chopping around. Right. You know, it almost looks like a pattern kind of like the old um, sine wave, you know? It's just like you see it kind of just balancing up across a median line, yep. you know? Basically the 112 half to 113 area. So if you're just looking at it in the short run, I would say expect choppy conditions and kind of look for this to kind of be the buffer zone. Okay. Okay. Now, if we have a difference of opinion with the Fed today, that's when we could see. Now, if you take like that recent high back in the end of March and then also into the high of mid April, kind of use that downward sloping trend line. Yeah. If we reach that and then get up to the 113 half area, that would be a very bullish sign that at least takes off the bearish sentiment for the euro US dollar trade. I get you know, it. So now you're breaking the trend line. So you're looking at it the same way. You're just breaking the trend line, which is pretty cool. Right. Okay, great. All right. Sure. And now if, if that momentum breaks, see that's the thing is it's been in this short term bear trend and no matter what, the euro has not been able to gain strength against the dollar. It can't get up to that 114, 115, 116 area. Yes. And and usually when you can't get below 111.5, 111, or 112 area, the euro bounces, goes back to 116, and it'll try and spike to 118. We failed to do that so far this year. Right. You know. Right. So I think that if you, especially if the Fed comes out remotely changing the dovish sentiment, you know, and then you also have to look at Venezuela. Um, this, if this coup happens and it becomes bullish and good for the American trade zone. Um, then you'd probably see a little release in oil, okay? So, and if the release in oil happens, then those are other four positive things for our economy, which may make the Fed think twice, you know, about staying on this dovish stance. So it'll be interesting to see what they say at 115. I would say that if you're in a position right now with the currencies, obviously use a tight stop. Um, be careful of a really whipsaw trade in the afternoon. Um, and that would be really, like I said, is if their their consensus is that they're worried about the growth, you know. And I think that if we were dealing with a different Fed, like a Fed of a year ago or two years ago, they would look at these GDP numbers, the earnings numbers, and say that the economy is overheating. In my opinion, you yeah, know? no, no, I, it's, it's, there's a lot of moving parts right now, man. Three point two percent GDP, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. And these are things that weren't expected, you yeah. know. So. To see how they filter that will be very interesting. I think that oil will be a key, especially if the Venezuela thing can get smoothed out, because that means supplies are definitely going to increase again, you know, um, yeah, and then yeah. how that... You know, and we just got the EIA numbers, man, and they're... they're, they're it's almost 10 million barrel built. Yeah, where's the... Right, uh... right. And it's the refining part that's, that's hitting us right now with the gas, you know? Yeah. So... So we'll see how that balances. I mean, this build can't keep on going in the summertime and gas prices not eventually start to go down as they turn from the, the, the whatever, the winter grade to the, uh, to the summer grade, you know. So, but those variables, I think, are kind of interesting because we talked about before last week in the last couple of weeks how the dollar is driving earnings in the market and may continue to do so into the third and fourth quarters. So if we do get a stabilization in Venezuela and if the Fed remains in this dovish outlook, even amidst these growing factors, then I think you're going to see a very big acceleration of the economy. And this is where we might see a turn in the dollar, okay? Because as oil drops down and as the economy continues to go up, then we should probably see the, um, the, the lesser majors as well as the majors go, but not just go into the range, back into their trading range, but to go take away, um, you know, the trend again from the dollar That's strength. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I see yeah, what you're right. saying. Right, exactly. Yeah. So the dollar wouldn't even have to move that if the economy is going so good, it's just like everything else. Those other economies will start going better so their currencies can go up versus the dollar. Right. Yeah, cool, man. Yeah, and then it, what it'll do is it'll have a, a balancing effect where most people would say as the dollar weakens, it's, it's not good for us. But as, if we have an accelerating economy and the dollar gets weaker, that means our exports grow. Yeah. Correct? You know, so in all those things, it'll balance out our earnings, you know, which I think means that unless we have a major shakeup like Venezuela goes bad, oil continues to rally up to $80, $90, yep. and something else like that, those are the only things that I could see that would really shake up the economy towards a really negative way, in which case you're going to see some incredible movement in the dollar versus the major currencies. Yeah, and you know that... 
There's no doubt the uh, it's nice seeing oil come down today. I mean, because gasoline, you know, none of us buy barrels of oil, but everyone buys gasoline, man. I'm saying, I don't want to see ninety dollar oil. No. No. <laughs> no. no. Diesel's cheaper than gas. Yeah, well, that's pretty sick. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. Listen, folks, every trading day you can check out Teddy at forex-trading-unlock.com. And that, that oil just took another dive down, right? Did it? Perfect. Yeah, yeah. You're going to love that. Yeah. Teddy, you have a great week, safe week. Oh, hey, I hope you did good good golf last week, man. You were going off golfing, man. It was all right. It was good. I'm golf. sure. Thanks. Hey, we look forward to speaking to you next week, man. Take care, guys. Thanks, Thanks Teddy. Teddy. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have oil right now, uh, 63 uh, 18 yeah. $63.18. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002 when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we get some uh, action in oil. We sure do, man. We might be below 63 bucks by the time mm -hmm. we're off the air. And the so, ones we looked at, that was, those were the noons. That would have been a sweet trade. I've got it up here. So this is the bearish side of the spread that went till noon. Um, you Again, you'd have until noon if you want that exposure. You want to exit this trade right now. Uh, you're able to get $68. The whole contract was going to cost, as in both sides, 37 right. I kept saying, man, you could easily have taken this. You were maybe a little bearish, right? You're yeah. putting up about 18 20 bucks. Um, and if you want to let it run, man, that was a 10 million barrel build. Um, 
a big number. It might run. It might run for it's sure. Big... Well, and what Teddy just brought up, they get, if we get Vince the Whaler straightened up, man, that's going to be a huge oil supply. Yes. But, you know, yeah. That's... Good luck. Just, just good luck. humanitarian. Yeah, right. No, right. I say it like as in they, they, that's quite they a humanitarian deal. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So Bitcoin, right? The news out last week saying Tether might not be backed by actual dollars. Right. Uh, the article yesterday came out, I guess, saying that they actually said that it's backed by 74%. Of, of yeah, so for every you know tether out there, you have 74 cents of U.S. dollar back in it. Not supposed to be what was happening. So in the story today, you pointed out that, and this is on Bitfinex, and that's the one under the controversy. Um, so Bitcoin on that exchange trading $300 premium versus just Bitcoin on other exchanges. Right. The reason why people are taking their tether, so they're exiting tether. In the wake of the allegations and trying to get into Bitcoin, and, and then and then probably exchange. get get, get that Bitcoin off out. there as well, right. um, because if they're raiding funds that are supposed to yeah. be basically escrowed to to cover the underlying, right. then, then who the knows? Claim. Yeah, and and it seems like that claim is legitimized because they already came out and said, you know what? Yeah, we only have 74 cents on the dollar. Um, and there you go, and equals 74% of the outstanding coins. And more than likely, we'll see that, uh, we'll keep track of that, folks. That premium will probably keep going up. And they only said that in court, because they had to. This yeah. isn't like they came out, so there might be more coming. Exactly. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. We have Fast Market coming up next, and I'm Ann Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Meow! Fed Day. Meow. <laughs> <laughs>